Hi friends, in this particular video, I'm going to talk about application of non-ferrous alloys. Before we start talking about what are the different types of non-ferrous alloys and what are the applications where they will be used, let me talk briefly about why ferrous alloys are very popular. A few reasons are they are very easy to manufacture and through heat treatment, we can achieve a wide range of mechanical properties for ferrous alloys. To give an example, for a steel of eutectoid composition, which is 0.72 weight percentage of carbon, the tensile strength can be varied from 700 MPa to 2000 MPa. Okay, so this high variation in tensile strength can be brought out by performing heat treatment on ferrous alloys. Few other things to mention. Iron containing compounds are very abundant in nature. Moreover, the processing or the ease of fabrication or the method of fabrication is a lot more economical compared to other alloys. So these are the few reasons why ferrous alloys are very popular. But as they say, every coin has got its two sides. Ferrous alloys obviously have their drawbacks as well. So the first one is they are relatively dense. Uh, to give a rough number about the density of steel, it is something around 7,800 kilogram per meter cube. So this is quite high value of density for a metal. Because you have other metals like tungsten or aluminium for which the density values are much lower. Now yet another drawback is that they are very susceptible to corrosion. This you would have learned in your high school physics, rusting and all those phenomena will happen. So corrosion is something we need to worry about when we have ferrous alloys in action. The last point is their electrical conductivity is comparatively a bit low. So because of all these drawbacks, man wanted better alloys to meet his requirements. So these are the few types of alloys, types of non-ferrous alloys, which we will talk about in this course. The first one is copper and its alloys. Then the second one is aluminum alloys. And the third one is titanium alloys. As the name indicates in these three types of alloys, the major component or the major element will be, in the first case, it will be copper. And in the second case, it will be aluminum and in the third case, it will be titanium. That's why they are called titanium alloys, aluminum alloys and copper alloys respectively. Now, moving down the list, we have refractory metals, we have noble metals, we have super alloys. They are named that way because they possess certain characteristics. We may um, discuss in detail about what are the different characteristics these alloys possess and why they are called so. So let's get started talking about copper alloys. In its unalloyed form, copper is so soft and ducted. Now, once we hear that it is very soft and ducted, that implies we have we can perform unlimited cold working on this particular alloy. And yet another property of copper alloys is that they are very high resistant to corrosion. The one other drawback is that they cannot be hardened or strengthened by heat treatment. We have discussed about heat treatment in, in a sufficient depth in my previous videos. So I won't dive deep into it. But none of those techniques are applicable to copper alloys anymore. So the next question arises, how we can improve its mechanical properties? For that we can use techniques like solid solution alloying and cold working. Make sense? Now, 
go ahead and let's talk about few examples of copper alloys to start off with i will first talk about brass which is an alloy of copper and zinc actually this particular alloy is not that strong but it it is having very good corrosion properties it is used in costume jewelry it is used in automotive radiators it is used to make coins as well another copper alloy is bronze which is an alloy of copper and tin it is stronger than brasses somewhat stronger than brasses and they still have that good capability they have good capability to prevent corrosion third type of copper alloy is beryllium copper this is an excellent alloy uh, it has good combination of strength as well as corrosion resistance its strengths are as high as 1400 mpa this can be heat treated electrical and it, it is having very good corrosion and electrical resistance sorry corrosion resistance and electrical conductivity i mean so there should be a correction here corrosion resistance here i mean they have very good electrical conductivity and corrosion resistance an example where beryllium copper is used is aircraft landing gear bearings they have good lubrication capabilities also they have wear resistance very good property of wear resistance if they are lubricated properly beryllium copper is also used in surgical and dental instruments it is very costly uh, this particular alloy is high strengths are obtained by preci precipitation hardening heat treatments that's how beryllium is introduced to the introduced in the copper okay so that's what i i wanted to tell you about copper alloys couple of more things the first thing is Mm, the Young's modulus of copper alloys is typically in the range of 128 GPa, and its density is 8960 kilogram per meter cube. So this is not as light as some other metals like aluminium or tungsten. So let's go ahead and talk about aluminium alloys. Coming to aluminium alloys, the very good characteristic of an aluminium alloy is its density. It's very low compared to other metals. Its density is around the range of 2,700 kilogram per meter cube. Adding to that, aluminum has got very high thermal and electrical conductivity, and it has got fair amount of resistance against corrosion as well, unlike to most of the ferrous alloys. Moreover, yet another important engineering property of aluminum is its very high ductility. The reason for this can be attributed to the face centered cubic crystal structure of aluminium. Um, you would have seen aluminium in the form of thin aluminium foil sheets. So this is the reason why aluminium can be uh, shaped into very thin sheets or very thin foils. It is very ductile. Now, as I used to say, every coin has its two sides. When we talk about the limitations of aluminium alloys, one of the big limitations is its low melting point. So melting point of a typical aluminium alloys is around 6, 660 degrees Celsius. So you can't design a product which has to work at temperature, let's say 800 degrees Celsius or 900 degrees Celsius with aluminium material. We need to go for better materials. One important thing that I would like to talk about is the specific specific strength. So if you're wondering what is specific strength, it is a ratio of, let me put it down here. So it's a ratio of tensile strength to your specific gravity. So specific gravity is nothing but density of a particular material to the density of water. So effectively, specific gravity tells you how dense the metal is. So this is called specific strength. Now, when you have a material which with more specific strength, then you can reduce the weight of your structure in order to carry the same amount of load. 
So if you compare aluminium with steel, obviously when you compare it on terms of strength, aluminium is inferior to steel in terms of the strength, in terms of tensile strength. But when you are a designer, you want to design a component and when you your application is that sort where you put a high premium on weight, let's say an aerospace application, then I may not go for a ferrous alloy. I will go for an aluminium alloy because I'm getting weight advantage. That means less fuel consumption. I don't have to carry a lot of mass where I'm going. Now, um, when you talk about aluminium alloys a little bit further, mainly mechanical properties, mechanical strength of this particular alloy can be improved by cold working or by alloying, where common alloying elements are copper, zinc, manganese, silicon, and like that. Then, um, aluminium alloys, there are certain class of um, alloys which are heat treatable, and there are certain class of alloys which are not heat treatable so um, for non heat treatable you need to use techniques like solution solid solution strengthening and all these things then also aluminium alloys are mainly classified into cast and wrought alloys if you are wondering what does this what does a wrought alloy mean and a cast alloy mean when your alloy is not amenable for machining then usually let's say they don't have that much of ductility then they are often cast so they are cast alloys they are not amenable to machining and all while wrought alloys are there those type of alloys who are amenable or those kind of this kind of materials are amenable for plastic deformation or machining and all those things so that's the distinction between a cast and a wrought alloy make sense so when we talk about the application of um, aluminium alloys they are widely used in automotive parts uh, aircraft structural parts they are used to manufacture beverage cans moreover finally i would like to touch upon a, a particular kind of aluminium alloy called the aluminium lithium alloys they have a very good characteristics to name a few they have very low density around 2500 kilogram per meter cube and they have very high specific modulus um, that is the ratio of Young's modulus to density they have excellent fatigue properties and they have very um, lot they behave or they exhibit low temperature toughness as well that's why for cryogenic tanks um, in space programs we use this sort of alloys they are very costly but they have an amalgamation of very good properties which which is really what is needed in aerospace industry thanks for watching